Hey guys, welcome to another video here with Queen City Reefs. Today guys is an exciting day. I've actually been invited over to the house of the one and only Mr. Tristan from TRSC Aquatics. Come on in, guys. Wow. See, I wanted to get an actual true reaction before, you know, <laughs> before the whole thing. And wow, man, this is amazing. I'm, I'm glad I'm not the only one with uh, with several tanks in the home. So. <laughs> I don't think you've seen anything yet. <laughs> wow. Well, we've expanded, we've added here the, uh, the duck pond, covered the ducks. It's just that we find it easier to refer the <laughs> systems by like a nomaker, you know, like this is duck pond because it's easier for her to tell like go pull, you know, this from the duck pond instead, you know, rather than saying go pull it from the four by oh, one day. Yeah, yeah, you know, with that one there, you know, it, you know, each tank has like a, a little nomaker here. Oh wow. This is absolutely amazing. You just let me know when you ever you want to shoot your glamour shots and you know, I'll go full blue so you can yeah. have fun. So, first things first, thank you very much, man, for inviting us over, having us over here at your house. Yeah, absolutely. Letting us come in with uh, our, uh, you know, my, my camera crew here <laughs> <laughs> um, and check out your, your own, you know, your place and, and your coral farm here. Um, I, when did you get started as TRSC Aquatics? So, we're, we got started as TRSC Aquatics uh, five years ago. Um, we actually started down in uh, Clover, South Carolina, uh, and that's part of where the SC uh, comes in there, right? Um, so uh, TR was for uh, Tristan's Reef, SC was for South Carolina, and it yeah. also happened to be the uh, last name or, or the YouTube name of my partner at the time, which was a uh, SC Reefer, right, Got Chris? It. And uh, so we came up with TRSC. I thought it was pretty uh, cool, and you know, we actually initially did it because. We were having just a really tough time finding corals. Really, the only place that we could find some good stuff was uh, maybe like Nemo's Reef and, and online. And uh, having come from Jersey, uh, you know, I had so many different places at my disposal mm. up there, you know, Ocean Gallery and, and you know, uh, AC3 and a whole bunch of different areas up there. I mean, it's huge in Jersey. So it was really tough for me to drive an hour yeah. or two hours in any other direction just to find cool corals or find new yeah. shops to go visit. I mean, going to a fish shop down here is kind of like an all day event, you know, it's yeah. a family event, load up the family and we all go. So we, we figured that, you know, we wanted to start something that was uh, pretty cool, but uh, we only had one model really was, if we're gonna sell corals, that we wanna sell corals at something that we would wanna pay for. It. So if you go to a fish shop and the only reason you buy a coral is because it's 20 or 30 bucks, and that's what you had on you that day, then that's what we want it to always be, that 20 or $30 coral shop, which is why almost 90% of our stuff like online is hovering right around that 20 yeah, it, to 30, 40 bucks. Affordable. You know? yeah. um, and that's a lot harder than you think to, to find corals, find suppliers, find places where you can actually still purchase that stuff and make a decent profit, you know, uh, to keep things going. But uh, one of our models here is too is that you know we're hobbyists first, so this is my playground, and yeah. this is what it was initially designed as yeah. my my playground. The wife said I get, I get this. This is my area. This is what you would call right. your man cave, right? <laughs> exactly. Yeah, this is my man cave. So this is what I love to do, right? Um, and so I just kept adding tanks. So I put up this wall. 
and I sectioned that roof off, uh, room off over there. I added in the mini split just to get things, uh, uh, get things going and keeping the room cool and insulated the whole area. And when we started online, uh, it was super slow. You know, it was really hard to get there, but at the same time, you know, I was in the YouTube community. And, uh, you know, as long as we kept to that motto, things started growing and it's just been growing. It's yeah. been at a breakneck speed. You know, we're constantly having to get new, uh, more products, keep things in reserve just to be able to replenish online. So it, it gets uh, it gets pretty tough sometimes. I mean, I still work a, a normal job. This is just a... Um, oh, wow. So yeah. this is not your full-time job? No. Oh, no, wow. no, absolutely not. No, I, I was still, thinking it would be. I no, mean. I still work for Corporate America. Um, actually, uh, my wife and uh, we have two, uh, two workers that work with us here. Uh, helping us uh, pack orders every day, um, you know, maintenance and stuff like that. Um, and, uh, you know, they're really good guys. They show up, they come with me to shows and things like that. And, uh, yeah, so, I mean, I still work a corporate job. Um, and it's just about us streamlining our process to make it easy, right? So, okay. uh, for us here, we have something called just-in-time shipping, which, is me which means that basically somebody could place an order. And as long as that order is in here by 11 or 12 o'clock and we have confirmation they want shipping um in about an hour it'll be packed and ready to go so same day almost so that from yep. as long as it's by a certain time exactly Got so it. up until around seven o'clock p.m at night uh is the last uh last moment that we will ship an order so uh actually a lot of our customers and you know uh, place orders that late and they're surprised to get a shipping uh a, a, a tracking number yeah, an hour tracking later. Order, yeah. yeah. Because I know, like, I'll, I'll tell you myself, you know, this, this hobby is addicting, right? Oh, yeah. And, and a lot of times you shop at places, local places because you want your coral right away. Mm -hmm. And the fact that you, you know, you give them that tracking number as long as they meet that deadline on the same day, that, that's awesome because I know that when I order stuff, I'm like, okay, when are they going to send me my tracking number? When are they going to send me my tracking number? It, it's hard to, it's hard to really, like, order stuff online and not know when to depend on, you know, on getting something, especially if you're paying, you know, quite a bit of money for it. Oh yeah. Uh, one of the fun things is that I really love to meet like my customers. So one thing, I mean, we don't typically advertise it, but if you are within 20 or 30 minutes here of the shop and you order and you have paid for delivery, uh, we'll hand deliver it the same day. Oh wow. Yep. Yep. Oh, wow. By that evening, we'll give you a call. Well, what's uh, that? What's that mile range? Because I'm <laughs> <laughs> right around right around 30 minutes. All right, is all where right. we uh, set our, our limit around here. Because my first ever uh, reef swap that we went to was in Valley Forge in, in Pennsylvania, right? And I went there and I was completely blown away. And this is this is way back in the day. We're talking about 10, 15 years ago. And uh, I went in there and I remember basically spending an entire paycheck because there were so many corals so cheap and that's what i remember every single time i go to a swap now when we go to a swap it's really tough you're almost searching 20 or 30 vendors to find a really good price on something and you're price comparing to everybody to really find something yeah we take that out of the equation right um what, what i do is 60 percent of my stuff at the shows are going to be pretty much five for a hundred um, homegrown stuff, super healthy, just ready to rock and roll, just a variety of things. And, uh, you know, in our, in our experience, people typically come to a show and maybe a hundred, 200 bucks to spend on corals and to get five, one shot is typically a really good thing for them. Uh, we carry a bunch of the high end stuff as well, but the high end things take a lot longer to sell. You know, they're more of a collector piece mm -hmm. and I don't believe everybody who's coming to a, a fish show is, is a collector. Yeah. You know, some people just want to fill up their tank. They're a beginner. And that's what we cater to. I would say we cater more so to the beginner reefs, Got right? Uh, we help people go through the process, try out new things. And that's typically where our customer clientele lands us in. What would you say beginner pieces are? So for me, beginner pieces for me have always been things like softies, things like really easy Zoas, uh, you know, some are really hardy Euphelias, you know, some Favias, um, really easy soft and squishies, Galaxias and leathers and stuff like that. Those are really good beginner pieces. They typically come attached to a piece of rock, which brings a little bit of that bacteria from whatever, you know, established yeah. system that they're gonna be in there. And those are really not the worst things to die. You know, if you lose a they Zola, a lot. yeah, you know, you, you're gonna, 
you're going to be able to replace that easily you yeah. know and to just give yourself a chance and you know we carry an entire line of things for people who want to just try something first so for example almost every acro in this section here is 30 bucks really so and those are and those are not your typical quarter inch to half an inch no <laughs> no and, and we think that's super important too right yeah uh a lot of times we will hold on to things for a very long time until they're super encrusted and if someone says hey i really want to get into to acros and i don't know which one to try and i said well you're gonna really have to try to kill this one and it'll be like something like a, a green slimer or a stag or something like something yeah. that i've been growing for 15 20 years which i've left out overnight by mistake and came back the next morning to a slimed up acro and dropped it in the tank and it's, still and, it, and it's grown as a matter of fact <laughs> this entire group right here is off of that frag wow so i literally left it out here overnight walked away for a second came back the next morning oh man dropped it back in. so i've done that but i've done that with the more expensive pieces and unfortunately <laughs> hey, no that was, doesn't that doesn't dead. always that doesn't always yeah. work yeah recently right remember when i was like <laughs> what I, I saw it at the top of my tank and I was like, what? Oh no. Oh yeah. Now I still put it in cause you never know just in case, but yeah, now it's got algae all over it. Yep. No, uh, and stuff like that is easy. I mean, it's, it's humid in here. It's a slimer. So they slime up, you know, they're, you know, in a while they'll probably get splashed and exposed to air for a yep. couple hours at any yep. given time. So, you know, stuff like that makes it really easy at times to, uh, to get people in. So I typically start them off, you know, we start off with a green slimer or something like that, something fast growing and an anacropora, something like that, you know, a digi Monty. Yeah. And once I know that they're growing that stuff, good. We just kind of step it up incrementally yep. until, you know, they're, they're wanting want, want Walt Disney's and all that cool stuff, yeah, you know? Yeah, yeah. Uh, and typically that's where they go. That's cool. the path they take. So I've been to almost every show that I can, you know, be to with, that is locally. And you definitely at our, you are at every single one of them. One thing that I've noticed is that at every show that I've gone, you always do it bigger and better. And at this last one, which was the Carolina Aquatic Expo, mm -hmm. you took off out, you know, almost every single side, huge bats of, of coral. I mean, you said earlier that it, 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 took a while to get you know to that place where people actually you know knew who you were and all that stuff I, I think you're already there right I mean you literally have lines sometimes of people there you know yeah. how um what would you say is what attracts you know people to to TRSC um I, I really feel like it's engagement uh I am a engager right so uh it, it shows in my staff because we actually have trainings before shows right so yeah. we know how to engage people we have people at these shows that there's there's a guy or a girl that's going to talk to you about tank parameters there's a guy who knows his way around sticks there's a guy who knows his way around euphilia and you know all this other stuff uh, and basically we have people there that are willing to engage with folks and my thing about shows it, it's fun we just bought a huge travel trailer outside I a big that. six by ten travel trailer we're getting it wrapped next week with all trc colors and that's because we actually want to go on the road to a couple of different states places that are far away i have customers telling me all the time oh we're having a show can you come here and it's like man it's kind of tough to pack up and take all this stuff yeah. and just to pick up so you know we made the plunge this year we got a, a nice travel trailer uh something that we can load everything up and take it out there but I think what attracts people is engaging with them, yeah. you know, willing to talk, willing to listen to what they're saying. And the shows are fun for us. Yeah. You know, uh, this last show, Carolina Aquatic Expo, we had actually one of my customers, a long time customer has been ordering us from, from the beginning, uh, Robert from uh, Springfield, Illinois. He actually flew in for Carolina Aquatic Expo. He came here, he shopped, we hung out. And then he was at the booth with me the entire day, just seeing what a show is. There's not a lot of shows in Springfield, Illinois. So him coming out here and being able to see that was like super exciting for him and his, and his wife, right? Uh, you know, Heather was really amazed by what's possible here. Uh, they bought lots of cool things. They took it all back. They flew back with it through TSA, had a whole suitcase just for corals. Yeah. And I was able to take him around to a couple of my friends at the Carolina Aquatic Expo and say, hey, this is a good buddy of mine. Take care of him. And he got really hooked up. And we're willing to do that for anybody, you know? Yeah. You guys want to come hang out at a show, work the booth, 
you know, uh, just interact with customers. You know, it's, it's a t-shirt, a, ma a face mask if that area requires it. Uh, and just a really good attitude about the day, yeah. you know, uh, and that's what we primarily Where you focus get to on. talk reef pretty much all day. Exactly. You know, I, exactly. And, and I probably will take you up on that because, you know, at home, <laughs> they get bored and tired of me talking reef all day. Yeah, sure. <laughs> sure. I need somewhere to go vent. Yeah, but those shows yeah. are fun and that's what they're supposed to be a fun time. And we really try our hardest to make it about families as well. Yeah. Uh, if it's one thing you would have noticed around Carolina Aquatic Expo, uh, Sabu and I are the ones who are planning it 90% of the time. Uh, Rachel, his wife, is also heavily involved in it. And every show, we try to make it a family type mm -hmm. of, a, of an event. Um, you know, our Halloween one was really great. Kids got to yeah, come out there with there. costumes. Yep. You know, uh, my wife, were handing out, we were handing out glow sticks and all kinds of cool things for the children. Uh, there was a touch tank. There was a lot of really cool things for them to do. Uh, and every show, we try to make it a theme about our community because we really believe in this reefing community, especially here in this area. And let's face it, there's not a lot of shows that happen here. Definitely. Charlotte, this area, is not very many. So our upcoming show for fall is going to be really, Reef really Smart. special. No, Reef Smart is in, uh, in July. Got it. Right. Okay. So which uh, one's coming up? So the Carolina Aquatic Expo fall show. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And next year we're having the first two-day show uh, here in uh, in the Charlotte area as well. Yeah, because yeah, normally they're just a one-day event, right? Exactly. Oh, so, that's awesome. Yeah. So our fall show is going to be heavily towards uh, kids again, right? Uh, it's going to be kind of a back-to-school event because it's happening right after the Labor Day weekend, right after uh, school uh, opens up. Uh, and we're going to be doing cool things. Uh, we have some amazing sponsors, folks that are sponsoring backpacks and uh, pencils and pens and notebooks. Um, we have amazing sponsors that are, that are uh, giving us things like cleaning supplies and hand sanitizers. And we're building backpacks for, for the kids. Wow. Uh, uh, we're reaching out to the schools in the Charlotte area and the Fort Mill area. And we're encouraging them to come to the show as a family. Uh, bring your kids. And each of the children that shows up, they'll just let us know what school they're from or they'll have a scavenger hunt. A scavenger hunt that they can walk around to freshwater side, the saltwater side. It'll be things like find a euphilia, right? Yeah. And so they'll have to go and find a euphilia. And whoever that vendor that they found the euphilia at would sign off, say, hey, they found the euphilia. Oh, wow. Find an ACAN, find, you know, an uh, axolotl, you know, find a... Uh, uh, this Everybody will find fish. the axolotl right now. Right. <laughs> <laughs> they're, 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 so, right now. they're adorable, yeah. right? Yeah. <laughs> um, but it's just teaching them. And we're working yeah. with the science teachers and, and the biology teachers, the chemistry teachers wow. in the, in the uh, Charlotte. Wow, really uh, getting engaged area. with the community. Yeah. Right, exactly. And basically the school that has the most kids come out is going to win a bunch of school supplies all donated by Carolina Aquatic Expo and our amazing sponsors. Wow. Right. That's so, amazing. So y'all... Y'all have to make sure that, you know, if, if you are in this area, that you come by and, and support and, you know, you'll get, you know, a chance to win this grand prize here, which is really amazing. Yep. Best of you all, I mean? teachers and children are free for the show. There you go. So, <laughs> My wife you know, is a teacher. There you so. go. So you don't even have to pay to get it. Right. It. So okay. we just want the kids, the next generation of reefers to actually come yeah. out, see this stuff, see their world, because so let's face it, man. Uh, by the time they're you know our age you know some of these things might not even exist anymore and this may be the first and only opportunity they have to actually see it yep. what better way than to see it at one of these shows yep, absolutely. Uh, yeah absolutely yeah we're hoping to have some really great speakers to talk about conservation and about you know our world aquatic basically um just to give those kids an opportunity to see that marine biology you know aquatics those are valid paths that they can take and you know the funny thing about you know covid and all these crazy things you know the dreaded c word is that it's given people an opportunity to try out new things to learn about entrepreneurship to learn about business mm -hmm. and reef keeping the reef hobby you know lfs is they're a very entrepreneurial type of a thing you know you have to learn people and and sales and tactics and strategy communication and, and you know just learning how to work with people and a lot of people are figuring that out now and our future generation need to figure that out now as well because if they choose this path then it's something that they would need to learn about and it's good for them to start learning about it now you know just what's possible to them in the future and 
you know, this opens up a lot of doors to people. I wish there was a marine biologist that came for Korea there and said, hey, would you like to dive under the water in exotic locales and find new species of corals that's used from everything from cancer research and yeah. the vitamins that you eat, you know, or, you know, all of this cool stuff that I never knew about. And yeah. I wish there was somebody who did that. We'll find out about it later on, but I'm glad I can have a little part of it now. Yeah, absolutely. Well, thank you. Thank you for sharing, you know, uh, you know, what's coming up and all that. Definitely put me in a spot to make sure that I put this video out ASAP. <laughs> um, so I know that you have a YouTube channel as well. Yes. Basically, Tristan's Reef is being rebranded as TRC Aquatics. Um, Got it. One of the things about Tristan's Reef, it's more, it was more of a lifestyle, a, uh, a uh, what am I doing with my own personal tanks yep. and stuff yep. like that. And that's great. However, you know, one of the things in, in, this, in, this, uh, in this type of industry, social media itself, it's hard for me not to use a platform that I'm involved with, that I do as not a vehicle for my business that I yep. run. And I never wanted people to feel as if uh, I'm selling out for trying my company to, yeah, or yeah. just trying to shill TRC Aquatics. And for a while, differentiating between the two were very hard because I mean, I could pick up this acro and take it to my reef and say, hey, I just got this new acro. I got it from myself or from my company, but then it's more of a, a, it's, yeah. it's a very awkward situation. And honestly, I feel like this business and my own personal reefing stuff is all about this right now. Uh, it's about this, this journey, uh, going from here to there. And by rebranding uh, Tristan's Reef as TRC Aquatics, uh, I get to speak to my audience that has known me for so long. The people that still come up to, the, um, to, uh, to me at the shows and say, hey, I saw your videos, that's why you know, I placed an order. But it also gives me the opportunity to show them what's going on here. Yeah. Without it be, with being as completely we transparent open, as, open as, as possible, uh, as possible uh, with what's going on here. You know, this is a cool acro that I just got in. Because yeah, I, I can tell you else. that I definitely enjoyed watching your videos. Oh, uh, I enjoyed I, making them, yeah. I, I told my wife, like, you have a, a very cinematic way. There was one where about, you know, spilling water on the, on the floor oh, and how your wife <laughs> Yeah, was. the reef madre. <laughs> yeah. The reef madre. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah, that, that yep. I was like, that was amazing. I'm like, and then, you know, I follow some YouTubers, but you definitely were one of them. And, yeah, it's and, cool because, I mean, I love getting the kids involved. They love yeah. acting out and, yeah. you know, the video itself doesn't take me very long. I know what I'm talking about yeah. here. I, it's easy to shoot this stuff. Yeah. Pretty, pretty B-roll. The hard part is at the beginning. It's, it's that first one or two minute episode of the adventures of, of, of like Tiki, you know, or, uh, you know, Tiki Badasserman or, or Caspian, you know, my, my youngest. And, and they're really cool and they love doing this stuff, right? Yeah. So uh, I always think about something funny or cool. Um, uh, the next one, I won't give too much away, but uh, we shot a couple of things about boxes. A lot of reefers have a lot of boxes, and I don't like to throw away boxes. We're hoarding. I, I, I don't. I'm hoarding, so it's going to be a hoarding episode. <laughs> it's going to be hoarding, like, you know, it's going to be a hoarding episode about boxes. So, so in other words, we're about to get another video from you. Exactly. So that, that's awesome. Um, that's awesome, yep. and I'll make sure to link that below. Yeah. What do you keep your parameters at? So, actually, I keep my parameters at pretty basic levels, right? So... I always shoot for a range. Uh, my range for alkalinity is eight to nine is okay. where I like to be, somewhere right around the area. Uh, calcium is always, you know, 400 to 450, 460 is where, right where I want to be in that range. Magnesium, I keep on the higher side. I keep magnesium around 1350, 1400, 1500. Got it. And that's because I have a lot of euphilia, right? And euphilia, they suck magnesium up in my case. Uh, Nitrates and phosphates, um, it's whatever. I feed the tanks. If the, if the corals don't look open, I dump more food in, right? I mean, I test from time to time, but my nitrates are typically around 510. Phosphates are usually around 0.03 to right around 0.10 is, is, on, is on my high side here. Got it. Uh, in a commercial facility, I don't have to worry too much about algae, which a, a, a person in a, in a regular uh, reef aquarium environment might. Um, actually, nitrates and phosphates are something that's really difficult for me to keep in these systems. Uh, if you look, like for example, at this rack right here uh, of uh, euphilia, in a normal person's tank, a 100 gallon, 120, 90 gallon, if you stuck each of those euphilia all around it, you've covered one face of, of your rock. There's no more space. Yep. So that limits you to how much you put because not a lot of people are sticking stuff on the back of the rock. 
Well, in this type of environment, every square inch is covered by a coral yeah. that's using those things all the time. So for me, overfeeding is, is a daily. We overfeed. On purpose. You know, on purpose. Yeah. Um, we're, you know, we, we use a lot of AB, we use a lot of coral feeding, uh, coral foods that really um, add back in a lot of those things. So, you, you know? so you're uh, a believer in feeding your corals and all that a lot. Yeah, heavy in, heavy out. Got it. Right? And that's the way that we go. In this case, our heavy out is from the sheer magnitude and multitude of corals that are, that are in there using these things all the time. So uh, that's our heavy out. Um, skimmer, we barely want a skimmer. Uh, filter socks, non-existent. Um, you know, we run them when we do a big cleanup maybe, but other than that, nope. So how do you do heavy out? So our heavy out is the corals. Oh, yeah. so a lot of corals in. Okay, so that's yeah. actually a, a new one for me. Yeah. You know, and I watch a lot of videos, normally <laughs> heavy out is mechanical filtration. It is always the, the, what people talk about heavy out. In your case, you're saying you have a lot of corals, so you know you have to feed, and meaning that they're the ones who absorb all they're that. They're the ones who are using the, it, yep. What about water changes? So water changes here actually are kind of a funny thing because we're constantly using water for shipping, um, and we're shipping uh, out every day, right? So every box, you know, a gallon of water is about eight pounds, right? So our boxes are typically around eight to 12 pounds, give or take, you know, for, for shipping a box full of corals. And those are a couple of four to six ounce yeah. coral packs. Um, so you figure maybe five corals, every box is about a gallon. So if we're shipping probably 15, 20 boxes Monday, uh, you know, 10, 15 on Tuesday, you know, Your Wednesday, you're debating, that's pretty. like, you know, it's like 50, 60 gallons, you know, just in three days that we've moved out. We, yeah. we top off with, with Rody only on the weekend the rest of the week we're topping off with salt water wow you know uh because yeah when we pull that out yeah the sumps get low we have to open up the valve let salt water go back in that's pretty much a water change for us clean up you know we'll do a cleanup maybe once a month or so when we siphon the bottom of the tanks uh, of detrius or something like that uh, we'll siphon up all that stuff and, and, and we'll how, how do you do all that, that with i don't even see a corner where you can get yeah. into it. So stackable, <laughs> stackable okay. racks, right? Got so uh, I 3D printed legs that screw onto the racks, which pretty much elevate them up around six inches above Got the it. racks underneath it. And so we're able to lift up an entire rack, move it with the corals on it, um, and then siphon out, do all of our cleaning or scraping or whatever, and then put them right back in the spot. Got it. How, how long do, would you say it takes you to, I mean, do you do every single tank on one specific day or is it just, one tank today, one tank tomorrow, and so on. So how, what's your routine? So, like for this tank here, is this is a this is pretty much a grow out tank. This is a, a healing tank. When we frag things, we put them in here, we heal them out, right? So we wait until they're perfectly rounded, the cut edges are removed, and they've already healed over those edges. That's when they can make it over there. Got it. Um, so this tank doesn't get a lot of action, so to speak. You know, um, none of this stuff here is online. Um, so basically. In this tank here, I'll say once a month or so, we go in, we siphon out the bottom of it. Uh, uh, the thing is that we use gyres. And what are really cool about gyres is that they tend to localize all of the detritus. Mm. So I only need to siph siphon out four spots in this entire tank. The spots that are directly under the gyre. Uh. Right? So basically all I do is lift up that rack, slide it over that way, or just prop it up yeah and then all of my detritus is going to be localized right here and i just siphon all that out got it drop the rack back in move to the next section and then siphon those guys out so since you mentioned gyrus uh what other equipment do you use and i guess we'll go tank by tank yeah, sure. uh, what equipment do you use on this grow out tank so uh, tank. that's the other thing that's uh, unique about us so a million people will tell you all about different types of lights right yeah. We use all the lights, from the cheapest of the cheap to the expensive of the expensive, right? So there's G5s, you got, I got G6s coming in, mainly just to show that you can grow this stuff under anything. L light, for me, over the years, has become one of those things that I, I just don't need to focus on it no, anymore. I, I know exactly what these lights are capable of doing, you know? Uh, and, it, and it's super, super simple. As long as you have lights and good chemistry, that should be the last thing you change, you know? Uh, like for example, I would tell someone that 
if they put T5s and, and uh, reef brights over a tank, if you're having a problem in your system and your bulbs are new and, you're, and your lighting is, uh, is operational, I, w I would even consider light. Light is no longer a problem. That, that's the least of your worries. There's something else completely wrong, wrong with, with your system. Tank, yeah. It's not your light. But you know, we've experimented over the years with all different types of lights, halides and T5s, radions and Kessels and all that stuff. And it's about using the right light for the right job. If I used radions on this system here, I'd probably need close to maybe 12, right? Uh, spaced out every about 18, 18 inches, 20 inches apart. Uh, but using uh, Ocean Revives or Marine Lights, as they're now been renamed, you only need eight, you know? Uh, and it's super easy because the spread is so broad. Yeah, no, I'm, I, that it's it great. looks amazing in here. You don't see any uh, dead spots. Yeah, any dead spots or anything. I nope. mean, that's that's pretty cool. And, and then the the way the corals look under these lights, it, it all it also looks. They look very well. Right. Very well. I like customers to know that you can achieve this at home without radions. Uh, the one thing that I walk into a store and I see everything's under radions or whatever the latest new lighting system is at that point. And I'm going like, man, if I don't have those lights, there's no way I can achieve this. Like, nope, not at all. You can yeah. achieve this with, as long as it's a decent light with some kind of a track record to it, you're going to be fine. Yeah. Yeah. You're going to be perfectly fine. And that's what we do here. So we have the gamut of almost all the lights except metal hair lights, which is, yeah. that, would, that would be the only lighting system I say is maybe a little bit too old to incorporate because of, you know, heat and power and you yeah. just setting it up. But when LEDs, everything else T5s, works yeah yeah they all work fine man uh they're just just employ them and do them right get a par meter you know uh, not the big expensive mq510 or whatever yeah. that's cool if you have it go for it but a regular senai for 169.99 on a black friday sale at saltwater aquarium or brs is going to get you right where you need to be yeah. you know use it for the one or two times that you need to par your tank out know where you where you're going or or better yet you know give us a call if you're in the area we'll come out we'll par your tank for you, you, you know you place yep. an order we'll come out there and we'll par your tank while we deliver your order for you awesome. um you know you heard it set, here first. <laughs> yeah set you up with a, with a nice par map so that when you come back here uh and you want to shop or you see something else that you want and you just say hey what are you guys keeping this par in and it's really easy you know uh just keeping in that range as long as you have 150 170 par for you can keep just about everything here. Mm -hmm. What I like about these are these are all localized and, and dimmable, so I can create zones for each type of coral, right? So this will be a very high light zone. This will be a lower light zone because of LPS. you know the dephilia and the LPS or whatever. The general idea is I can create zones with this without having to worry about an app power outage or anything like that. They just turn on. They just turn off. That's all. So let's check out what lights you have in this location yeah, here sure. since we're in the light subject here. Um.